A lot of people have asked me this question and this is the best programming language they should use for competitive programming. This is a question which is very much prevalent when you are just a beginner at competitive programming and today I am Rachid Jain who will be answering this question for you. All right. So guys, I think the first thing is to understand what are the points that you should ask yourself. And I have seen at internet, there are so many blogs and videos which really confuse you. And it's also a lot of wrong information, I would say. <clears throat> as long as I would say there is a very favorable answer to this question, which is C++, I do want to mention that there are a lot of people out there who also try to say that um, maybe it does not matter and that you should do in any language. Some of them even say that you should actually use Python because it is more widely applicable in web development or machine learning. So <clears throat> if you are a beginner, you should, it makes sense basically to start with Python because it covers competitive programming as well as web development, which is a very wrong statement, I would say. And this is why I would like to first discuss what are the points that you should ask yourself and only then you should get to the final answer of which programming language is best for you. So the first point would be to consider that whether a same solution written in Python, for example, gives time limit error, but it gets accepted for C++. So every programming language is having its own internal structure because of which it might be faster or slower than other languages. C and C++ are considered to be the fastest languages and Python is relatively very slow. So a similar solution, similar algorithm using similar data structures can in fact give you time limit errors for Python, but the same code, same logic will get accepted for C++. So if you are thinking about any other language than C++, make sure to have a clear picture of how fast that is. Which brings us to the second point. How would you know how f whether you are getting a time limit error for your language or not? So you need to ask this question that what are the various websites on which you practice competitive programming and whether those websites respect the speed of languages. What this means is basically that there are some websites like HackerRank which take into account that some languages are slower than the others. Whereas there are some hardcore websites which are completely dedicated to competitive programming and I would say it's all about competition there and they expect you to basically use C++ or the fastest language. Okay. So code forces is one of the examples and we will cover in detail with examples about all these points. So code forces, if you try to submit a C++ solution or a Python solution, both of them will have similar time limit and it's very much high chances that the Python solution will get a time limit error. I mean time limit exceeded. So another thing to consider is that when you are beginners, especially for the first two years, I would say you might be getting stuck in a lot of uh, programming contests. And when you try to look out for solutions or help on the internet, most of the code that you will find in this area would be in C++. Okay. There are very few cases in which you are so lucky that you are stuck on some problem and you're looking out for some solution. And luckily you also found few people have written some code in Python and you're able to find that in terms of competitive programming, it's totally opposite because I have seen that a lot of places Python because of the easy syntax in web development, machine learning, it's all getting heavily used there. But again, as you will see, every programming language is having its own use case in competitive programming. Python really lags behind in that sense. The next thing is what do the top competitive programmers use? Because if you are beginning in this area, we should at least have a look at what the leadership is doing over there. So we will also cover that. And then finally, um, the main most important question that I would like to ask you is, but are you doing competitive programming just for cracking interviews or you are purely talking in terms of competitive programming? And I would like to first start with this because I know that a lot of people, especially in India are doing competitive programming just to get really good at data structures algorithms so that they can crack interviews. 
So if you talk about jobs, because that's what most of you are uh, inclined to. So if I will just zoom into C++, you can see that it has around 5.4 million jobs. And you can see that it's mostly favorable for desktop apps or IoT or gaming, okay? Whereas if you talk about web development, machine learning, this complete area is being covered by these three languages, Python, Java, and JavaScript. And you can also see that the number of jobs for them are quite high as compared to C++. So in that sense, I would say, if you really only care about the end goal, which is interviews, you can probably shift to Java because that's still faster or JavaScript. And I would, I would really focus on JavaScript here because I think that if you are really beginning new, JavaScript is a good language. It's definitely faster than Python and it has a lot of scope because uh, if you talk about web engineering, I mean, if you talk about front end or back end or even desktop apps, JavaScript is really picking up a lot in all of these areas. So just a single language, you can have really good in-depth knowledge and this will allow you to basically do any kind of job that you want. You can even build Android apps using React Native, for example, which is built on JavaScript. So I won't go into much detail, but if you really focus in that sense, like the end goal is interviews and getting a job, I would say this will eventually give you an upper hand. But again, if you really care about problem solving or you really enjoy that and um, you also want to learn from the community, at that point of time, it's important that you stick to C++. All right. So moving on, I would say whatever computer programming website that you are using, like in this case, if you talk about HackerRank, it has a very well established environment web page in which they have explicitly mentioned that in every contest for C, C++ and C++ 14, the time limit for your program allotted is two seconds. After that, it will throw a TLE. But in case of Python, it knows that it's a bit slower and it gives five X uh, leverage to Python. So you can see it's 10 seconds. The important thing to note over here is that a lot of uh, product based companies, including Microsoft, use hacker rank as their platform for online test assessments, which means that if you are sitting for placements, if it's on hacker rank, you can still use Python because it is having that leverage uh, on this platform. But if you talk about code forces, I mean, I was really depressed to see that uh, an order in login solution written in Python is getting time limit exceeded. If I just zoom in to make it more clearer, I'm using Python 3. It gave me a time limit exceeded on test date and the time limit, as you can see, is 3000 milliseconds. Even if I try to write C++ code, the time limit in code forces will stay constant at 3000 milliseconds. So they don't give this preference to Python. And not only that, if you talk about the leadership on code forces, if you talk about the red coders, 95% of red coders use C++ and um, this is two years back, but what I want to convey is that C++ is very strong and it has a very great community in competitive programming. And that's what the red, red coders are also using. If you talk about Code Chef, I wrote this Fenwick tree code um, just to compare how Code Chef handles the time limit for Python versus C++. And unfortunately, I got a time limit exceeded. Then I tried with C++ and I will just compare the time limits which were allotted to both of them. So the Python program took 2.5 seconds and then it basically give, gave me a time limit exceeded error. But for C++, it only took like same logic, but 0.05 seconds. So it's extremely fast if you're using C++. And unfortunately, CodeChef used to respect the slowness of Python, but even a red coder on CodeChef has talked about this and they have mentioned that why has Python's time limit multiplier been reduced? So the downside of using some other language would be that first of all, you don't know whether that website will eventually support this feature like HackerRank does. And even if they do like CodeChef used to do, but they will constantly tweak around to ensure some production business changes that they want to do. And I really tried a lot to make that Fenwick tree code get a solution, accepted solution, but it never happened with me. I tried four times, but then I finally gave up. In fact, I also read on Quora and Mr. Bohadan has also mentioned that, I mean, he, ha he has a very strong opinion, I would say, because he in fact used the word inferior instruments for languages like Python. But what he meant to say is that it's competitive programming. It's a sport 
and it involves programming. In case you are not capable of creating a program which runs fast enough, it's your fault. And he mentions that if uh, you don't tell your customers basically that your product is slow because developers were not capable of learning the right framework or right language. And what he means to say is that if you know that it's competitive programming, it's a sport. And if you know that the right tools for this are C++ or C or probably Go, I mean, it's a new language, which is also very fast. So if you know that these are the right tools, make sure that you start with them. But in case, as I mentioned, if your end goal is not competitive programming, but something like more on coding interviews and web development and more as a software engineer, at that point of time, maybe it makes sense for you to start with something like JavaScript or Java or Python. So yeah, guys, that's all I had in mind. And uh, one last thing I would like to cover is that even when you get stuck in case uh, you want to look out for some other solutions in your language. For example, for this problem that I was showing about Fenwick trees, I tried to apply a filter of language Python and result accepted and it shows me that there is no recent activity. And in the down, you can see that for C++ language, you get to see that other people have actually submitted correct answers and you can have a look at that. So in this case, it really helps you a lot if you are stuck. And um, that's what I mean to say by the community of C++ is huge. So it's very easy to get help. Um, that's all guys. Uh, if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on my social media. The Twitter and Instagram handles are shown in the screen and hit the bell icon if you want constant updates whenever I put the video. I'll see you in the next one guys. Till then, take care, stay home and enjoy. Bye bye. Happy coding.